Well, in terms of Gesar of Ling, um, naturally, this is not something familiar to us in the Western world. However, in Asia, um, the story of Gesar is very well known, you know, in, in China, in Mongolia, in Tibet. Uh, historically, the, um, the Gesar um, life story is located in a region of Tibet at the Machu River area in Ma, which is the land of Golok. And Golok is, is a land that has produced many countless realized masters. And it's also a land where many practitioners of Buddha Dharma have attained rainbow body. So it's very fascinating because this happened even at the turn of this century. And you can go there to this day and visit those places and the people will tell you about it. And many of those teachers and practitioners can trace their family line back to the time of Gesar. Gesar is not a fictitious lore. This is a true, real story of the manifestation, one of the many manifestations of Guru Padmasambhava who came into the world according to timing to defeat obstructing forces and obstacles and to uplift the sacred Buddha Dharma. And so it's, it's a fascinating story, but I bring that up about Golok because the entire epic is loaded with proverbs and information that really find their roots in the Golok heritage. And so in learning uh, the epic of Gesar of Lang, you're also learning about the Golok people. And another interesting point is that many of these masters from Golok are now living in the West, coming to the West, teaching and spreading the Buddha Dharma, more than any other area in Tibet from what I can see. So there seems to be some kind of a karmic destiny in a way that their tradition would come out and spread around the world. And with the spreading of that, it also does spread the blessings of, of Gesar, the great warrior who you know, represents the kingdom of Shambhala and the highest potential of a human being. Those proverbs that are loaded throughout that epic are lessons on life. And it's not something that is other than exactly what we need, especially now. So I would encourage everyone to definitely read that epic. Uh, it's a hard little harder to get through the first volume. Don't be discouraged. By the time you get to the second volume, it becomes much more lively and fun. And um, then on into the third, and there's more to come. Um, we're also engaged in the translations of the um, subsequent important battles where he actually became the great warrior and defeated the enemies and obstructing forces such as the Dutling and the Horling. And in truth there's over a hundred different um, volumes in the Tibetan language that deal with the different battles of Gesar while he lived on this earth. So it's really remarkable. And the, even the government of China has set up research centers for Gesar literature and for the propagation of this because they've understood uh, what an important narrative this is um, in a worldwide sense and they're encouraging the translation of it into other languages as well, including Chinese especially, Mandarin Chinese. So I would encourage everyone to connect with that and learn more about this epic because it will definitely um, be inspiring and help to uplift the state of, of humanity at this time, which we all want to contribute to, to make this a better world.